I'm Mungo Dark Manor and welcome to Dark Manners. Today we're going to talk about unlicensed FM transmitters. Well, that sounds evil and like something a Bond villain would set out to jam all the radio in the free world. But what an unlicensed FM transmitter really is just means that the product that's using it doesn't require a license from the FCC. The FCC provides for really low powered FM transmitters and the main thing they're used for currently is connecting your iPod, your MP3 player, or your satellite radio to the radio in your car. Now, newer cars are starting to get uh, Bluetooth connectivity between devices. And like for instance, uh, your iPhone, which can play iTunes, has Bluetooth in it, so you could connect that directly to your stereo using Bluetooth if you have a car that's compatible with Bluetooth. Uh, but the other reason people use these FM transmitters is for in the home to connect the same type of devices to like their radio. Well, in the home, we now have uh, products that are like Bluetooth capable and uh, or Bluetooth speakers that can re receive transmissions from like Bluetooth devices. So Bluetooth will probably eventually replace these low-powered FM transmitters and the FCC doesn't really like them all that much because they can interfere with things. Uh, back in 2008 they started to crack down because they found out manufacturers were kind of pumping up that uh, power level a little bit. Not a whole lot, but enough so that their product looked like it worked a lot better. So if you bought a product before 2008 you might think, wow this thing worked great. And you buy a new one and you think Gee, this only works a few feet from the radio. Well, that's what the FCC wants, and so the power levels are down. Some say they will work over 20 feet from the transmitter or better if, uh, if there are no walls in the way. In, under ideal circumstances, I guess they'll transmit a little farther, but they get blocked by walls and all sorts of things. So if you have a transmitter that's working really well, it's either an old one that's uh, you know powered up a little higher than it should be or it's a new one that's not really exactly legal so you need to make sure you get an FCC approved um, FM transmitter if you want to be legal but the other thing you really want to make sure of is that you're not interfering with anybody else's radio because then they'll complain or particularly if it affects a bunch of people and then the FCC will come looking for you or in theory um, so one way to avoid this is make sure you transmit to your radio on a channel that's not used in the area that you live in. Uh, that way it's less likely to interfere with other radio stations. Also, if you're using one in your home and it's working pretty good, go outside your home and turn on your car radio and see if you can hear it on your car radio. And then kind of drive away from your home and see how far you can hear it. If you can hear it a few blocks away, that means it's way too powerful. If you can barely hear it outside your house or not hear it outside your house at all, it may not be a problem at all in theory. It still may be illegal, uh, but as I said, they're kind of concerned it's interfering with things. And so if it's interfering with things, they may actually uh, look for you. So that's the thing to keep in mind. Just kind of be low, be low key. You may want to actually find other ways to um, connect your device to your radio or to a stereo. You could use Bluetooth possibly, uh, particularly if you have a Bluetooth uh, radio in your car. Um, you could use Bluetooth speakers in your home maybe. So look at other alternatives. Uh, and the quality of Bluetooth I believe is better than the FM transmitters even. And if you have a hardwire, it's definitely better than the FM transmitter. So if you can hardwire something, as it, instead of actually using an FM transmitter, I'd recommend that. I'm Mungo Dark Manor and this has been Dark Manners and whatever you do, enjoy technology!